You think wrestling's big here in the States? What with action figures and Halloween costumes and Thunder in Paradise and that one episode of Space Ghost where Randy Savage's his grandpa and threatens to put Zorak in a figure four leg lock? Best episode ever. Feast your eyes on this madness. The Fire Pro Wrestling series dates back to 1989 on the PC Engine, aka the TurboGrafx-16, and was one of the crowning gems of developers' human entertainment, who also gave us Monster Party, The Adventures of Gilligan's Island, and Clock Tower. Esoteric much? Anyway, we'll leave Hellish Landscapes, Bob Denver, and Point and Click action for some other time. There's wrestling to be done. What you're probably noticing is the utter lack of any UI whatsoever aside from the timer. While it keeps the screen all nice and clean, if the game doesn't come with a manual like this cart, you're probably going to be completely lost. Here's the trick, the Fire Pro Wrestling series couldn't care less about how many times per second you can mash a button. It's all about timing, and without any overt visual clues whatsoever, this poses a rather high barrier to entry to anyone trying to get into the series. While you can pretty quickly identify the punch, kick, jump, kick, and run buttons, the grapple, responsible for about 84% of the action, will continue to elude you. It just takes trial and error and getting power bombed a few times, maybe getting put in an arm bar, a tombstone pile driver, perhaps a side-to-side -side suplex. At least you're only holding a controller through all of this. But what sets the Fire Pro Wrestling series apart from its competitors is a ridiculously full-featured edit mode, rivaling the control we'd find in games for the PS1 and N64. While you can't arbitrarily scale up a wrestler's build by increasing the size of his polygons, regardless of what any spam emails may indicate, you can select from a huge array of models, alter any number of parameters, and save up to 16 of these custom combatants for later use. You can even pit them against card after card of ever so slightly knocked off Japanese pro wrestling superstars and the occasional western challenger making a cameo appearance. Case in point, the Undead Tailor. Yes, they actually went there. Man, knockoffs know no dignity, do they? Anyway, if you're not of a mind to find an import copy and search fruitlessly for a copy of the manual, I found resources for its predecessor and its successor, but not for this particular title. You can find a couple domestic versions that were released for the Game Boy Advance and PS2 and a new Avatar-centric version for XBLA. But those don't have the Undead Tailor, much to their chagrin. 